make sure my Wi Fi is on. It is. Good morning, good morning. We're going to do a little Bible study. I told y'all yesterday when I went live that I was going to come on today and tell y'all about Abimelech since I keep bringing up Judges chapter 9. We're going to do some Judges chapter 9 today. Um, it was supposed to, it's supposed to rain here all day. And so it's not raining yet, so I'm out here. Kids still sleep. It's perfect. So, I'll give y'all some view. Uh, lucky, lucky. That sky does look like it's doing something, though. It's about to do something. There's a few people down on the beach. Trying to soak it in before it's too late. I, when I get too far away, the um, Wi-Fi don't work. So I was getting too close. Let me turn this around. So anyway, today we're going to... Um, good morning, Deandrea Lachey. Good morning, good morning. Um, the video I put up on Saturday, um, the prophetic word about Jezebel's uh, coming down. Um, I, um, on YouTube, it got, there was a lot of comments and this one lady, um, she was just saying like how, like all these really bad things started happening in her life in 2015 and it hasn't let up yet. And when I was talking about seven years since, um, my life went through upheaval, it's been seven years, it was 2015 when it started, February, 2015 before I moved to Georgia, right before we moved. Um, and I've just been kind of like in survival mode since then. And so she was describing in the comments all the things and um, that, that she has endured and um, like it was pretty bad. And devil's just kind of like plucking away at her life but some of it some of that stuff is not the devil it's not just the devil because as i mentioned yesterday last night nothing can happen the devil can't do anything unless god permits it and it's hard for people to reconcile in their minds why god would permit death Betrayal, destruction, um, rape, things happening to children. Like, people have a hard time reconciling in their mind why God would permit such things. Um, and it's more, the, the reason we have a hard time with it is one, we don't read the Bible. And two, we're thinking, okay, since I didn't do this, since I didn't do anything wrong in this particular scenario then this thing shouldn't have happened wrong to me and this something unrelated but that ain't how it works because the lord will let sit and watch us be a hot mess for a long period of time and then one day he's like it's time for judgment like it's literally like it'll just be it's time he'll let you act let people act fool so it's not really about a blame thing it's just about instead of focusing on all the things coming at you from around you you have to really get centered in the lord and allow him to start ministering to you about the things that you need to do to make it so these doors that the devil is allowed to enter because you have left them open can get closed so i was my life was unraveling like that lady's life in the comments on youtube until one day like the light switch came on in my head like i need to just get right with god myself as an individual and then he, the door started closing and then the stuff like the crazy stuff stopped happening it's a process but when you just sit there and just wait on every and just like even in the things you're like well i'm gonna keep praying and i'm not telling you not to pray because we need to pray but a lot of times if your prayers are the same as they were last year five years ago 10 years ago then they're not doing anything because your prayer should evolve as you spiritually evolve 
as you get closer to God and get a better understanding of the things that he is trying to teach us in his Bible, this Bible is an instruction manual, then your prayers will change and be more pointed, be more, be anchored in the word. It's not just crying, even though sometimes I have prayers like that. It's not wrong. It's just that it's, that's not it. You know, you don't have to sit and beg and all that other stuff. You need to get a battle strategy of what you are actually praying about. And then once you pray, you have to get God's answer. So like a lot of times people are praying and it's a one way conversation. They're talking to God and they're not giving him a chance to say nothing back. And then when he does tell you something back that he needs you to do, you don't do it. Praying without obeying is pointless. First you pray, then you obey what he said. But the reason, some part of the reason why we don't obey what he said is because we didn't listen to what he said because we didn't want to hear it because our minds haven't changed at all. And so we can't even comprehend how what he told us to do could ever be right. So nothing changes. What I have learned in my own situation, good morning, Black Cherry 57, is that um, what God tells me to do is always the opposite of what I want to do. Like I was telling y'all last night, over the last two years, there was key points in the process of this particular thing happening in my life that was so unfair. Um that I had to do something that seemingly was going against my plan. I had to do something three or four times that took fasting and I'm like, and I, and I wasn't hearing it because I didn't want to hear it. And so I was still planning to do the opposite thing. And, and I had no peace with it. It was like, I ain't had no peace. And the Lord is like, do it. And I'm like, is that the Lord saying do it? Like, that's bad. If I do that, then blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, nah, he ain't saying it. Like, I wasn't trying to hear it because it didn't make sense to me. I couldn't understand it. It made no sense. It literally seemed like I was shooting my own self in the foot. That happened three or four times over the course of the last two years. And just this weekend, it is clear God knew exactly what he was doing. And the way he did it with my, I had to cooperate. I couldn't be working against him. I had to cooperate and the way he did it, it made it so that I actually found the source of the issue. I thought I knew the source, that was not the source. The people that I was mad at were eunuchs. They were minions in the whole thing. They seemed like they were the ones, but the, you know, I told y'all about Jezebel. Jezebel keeps her face hidden and she uses other people. I, the way I was moving, it was, I was focused on the, uh, the the front people, not the not the source. And the Lord, in His process, it got down to exposing the source. Guess what? Once the source gets taken out, everything can go back to normal. The Lord is going to take out the source. We aren't. We don't have the capacity to take out the source with our own human natural understanding of things. You gotta get God in it. He has to be in the plan. He has to be the general. He's gotta be running it. You go to him for your orders. Okay, general, what's my orders for today? He's gotta tell you what to do. You don't know what to do. You don't know what's all going on behind the scenes. You don't know all the players involved. You think you do, but you but you do not. There's, you don't know. In obedience, God's desire is that from out, from the outcome, he will be glorified. His ways are not our ways of understanding. And that's right. Because I know the way this thing is playing out, I am positive that it's him. And he is there. And when it's all over, everybody else is going to know. I'm sitting there holding this in my hand for the last five minutes. This is my fat running pudding, y'all. Y'all know. But, oh, I almost got it on my Bible. <laughs> Last year, I almost ruined a whole bottle when I came here because I brought the big bottle. But they have travel packets. Because it's supposed to be refrigerated after you open it. 
and I took a, it's a road trip I took that's drama trying to travel with something refrigerated I mean I guess you could have a cooler but then you got this big cooler with all this this melted ice even like I'm like just never mind so so anyway we're gonna talk today oh then I saw this other comment right before I did this I saw I ain't gonna be able to get this open without scissors I saw this other comment on somebody else's page but someone had put up something a Christian page that I follow I put up something political and it literally drives me nuts and tells me how much people don't read the Bible whenever somebody's like don't be talking political stuff like that's not I didn't come to this page for politics I came to get a word the whole Bible is political Jesus crucifixion was political it was literally political everything in the Bible is political Jezebel Mary Ahab for political reasons they were trying to forge an alliance she didn't have no power <laughs> she needed a king she needed a husband king right she 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 married Ahab so she could run his stuff people thinking that that we are not supposed to pay attention to religion as Christians and we're supposed to stay out of religion do you guys realize that what we are living through today is because people think that we're not supposed to pay attention to, to? We are attached to our government. So if they're acting a fool, guess who feels it? Us. And guess who still gets the wrath? Listen, when the leaders were bad in the Bible, when the leaders were wicked, when the kings were wicked, guess what happened? The whole kingdom suffered. So when you have a choice of who is in who is leading you as a country, you must speak up and you have to pay attention to the types of policies, not if you like them or not. Because like I read to y'all last night in Daniel, the beginning of the book of Daniel, he let the king of Babylon, and Babylon was a disaster, they were a mess, take over the king of Judah. The, the, he let them take over Judah, which was his chosen people, part of his chosen people. He let... This bad king take over Judah. because Why? Because Judah was bad. So it doesn't matter if you like them. What you should be paying attention to is the policies that are happening as a result of whatever. Yeah, but you need to do more than pray for your leaders. You need to choose them. And choose them wisely according to the word of God, not according to your likes and dislikes and your feelings and stuff. I feel like someone's like, because we just talked about how we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, right? What do you think about Jesus ruling now in our age that the kingdom of darkness has fallen? Kingdom of darkness, um, Jesus is, the Lord is always sovereign. So as I'm about to get to in this, in this passage, we're going to Judges chapter 9. We're going to read the whole thing. Cause it's a that's the thing. Don't tell, don't read one or two verses. You ain't getting the whole story like that. You gotta read all of it. So we're gonna read Judges chapter nine. Your real post was blocked. I'm not sure why that is. I didn't do it. I ain't blocked nothing. Judges chapter nine is the story of Gideon's son Abimelech. There's another Abimelech in the Bible. This ain't that one. This is Gideon's son. Judges chapter nine. And Gideon's son. Um, okay, I'm just going to read it. Okay, wait, let me give you a little backstory. So Gideon's son, Abimelech, was made with one of his um, side pieces in the town of Shechem. Okay, and it was a, it was a, it was a slave girl or something like that. It like wasn't like one of his wives, right? So this is kind of like an outcast son. This, this kid was probably, you know, had a lot of anger issues and stuff because his daddy really wasn't there or whatever. So anyway. Judges chapter 9 starting at verse 1. One day Gideon's son Abimelech went to Shechem to visit his uncles, his mother's brothers. He said to them and to the rest of his mother's family, ask the leading citizens of Shechem whether they want to be ruled by all 70 of Gideon's son or by one man. And remember that I am your own flesh and blood. Okay. I want to read something to y'all before I keep going on here. That happened before um, this passage. It was in uh, Judges chapter 8, starting at verse 22. Then the Israelites said to Gideon, 
be our ruler. This is after he saved them from the Midianites and stuff like that. Okay. So then the Israelites said to Gideon, be our ruler. You and your son and your grandson will be our rulers for you have rescued us from Midian. Listen to what Gideon says. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. Okay. So this is during a time when the Lord didn't want a king. He didn't want them to have a king. He like, I'm, I'm your king. And he would hire, not hire, he would appoint judges. That's why this book is called Judges. This is the time before they had their first king, which was King Saul. They had judges to like settle disputes and stuff like that. They were kind of like a ruler, but not really. They were taking their instruction from the Lord, right? So Gideon was one of those. Okay, so now Gideon dies. And then we and, and then his son Abimelech, um, who lives in Shechem, kind of like on the outskirts, is like, all right, I'm about to be king. So this is what happened. Now, this is this right here. This whole story is a story of manifestation. You know how everybody manifesting this and manifesting that? He he had this he had desired in his wicked heart and mind to be the ruler. He was tired of being the outcast that nobody paid attention to and he was going to show them that he was important and he was going to be the ruler. So he came up with this plan. Okay, so here we go. So he said, so he said, do y'all want 70 people to judge over y'all or y'all just want one ruler? And remember, I'm your blood. So because he went to his mother's town and talked to his uncle's, his mother's brothers. Like he wasn't talking to Gideon's people because Gideon's people know that it's not supposed to be a king. Okay. Verse three. So Abimelech's uncles gave him gave his message to all the citizens of Shechem on his behalf. And after listening to this proposal, the people of Shechem decided in favor of Abimelech because he was their relative. This is what happened when you go align with somebody for shallow reasons. You don't do wrong or agree to wrong just because you have this particular thing in common. Even if it's your family. If they're telling you to do something shady you don't go along with it okay they gave him 70 silver coins from the temple of bel Bereth, which he used to hire some reckless troublemakers who agreed to follow him the temple of bel Bereth is a pagan temple so this is like an exchange this is like a covenant forming this is like all coming from the pits of hell this is coming from false god from they gave him money from the temple that they had erected up to their false gods. This is all bad. The foundation of this whole thing is wicked. All of it. Everything about it is wicked. Okay. This is the equivalent of $22,400, how much they gave him back in 4,000 years ago. <laughs> okay. This is a long time ago. Okay. So you know that's a lot of money. That's probably like millions now, right? Okay. Listen to what he did with the money. He went to his father's home at Ophrah, and there on one stone, they killed all... Wait a minute. I missed something. Oh, I missed... Okay, wait a minute. Go back to verse 4. They gave him 70 silver coins from the temple of bel Bereth, which he used to hire some reckless troublemakers who agreed to follow him. He took the money... And he found some people who were displaced out in the world trying to, you know, okay, troublemakers, reckless troublemakers. That sounds like almost like gang people, right? These are people who are looking for a family, looking for significance, looking to prove that they're important. This is tends to be what these, that's what that's kind of describing, okay? So he went and found some people who was kind of down and out and, 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 and who like to make trouble and, and said, hey, y'all, I'm going to give y'all this money. Y'all roll with me. And they like, all right, bet. They don't really know what they're signing up for. Okay. So then, verse 5. He went to his father's home at Ophrah, and there on one stone, they killed all 70 of his half-brothers, the sons of Gideon. This joker went and killed all 70 of his brothers. Now, in his own evil, evil way, he was trying to take out the source of what would have overthrown him. Because he like, I can't be... So he caught, he snuck up on them and killed all of them on one stone. That is a sacrifice to whatever God that they probably got that money out that temple from. And this solidified his position, right? Okay, so. But the youngest brother, Jotham, escaped and hid. So one brother got away. 
Then all the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo called a meeting under the oak, oak beside the pillar at Shechem and made Abimelech their king. So before he was actually crowned king, he had to do that stuff. Once he did that stuff, killed all his brothers, they were like, all right, bet, you king. This is all, a, this is all, this is how people start getting into, um, Satan's good graces, for lack of a better word, because nothing about what he's doing is good, and, and Satan ultimately loses and turns over on everybody. So, but you feel like you get it's like, okay, yep, you can do it if you do this first. He paid the, with the money, he got people to help him, and then he slayed all his brothers on a stone. That was like an altar, and he put he had 70 human sacrifices on that altar, and then they crowned him king. Okay, so now he's king. Okay, verse 7, Jotham's parable. You know, Jotham was a little brother who got away. When Jotham heard about this, he climbed to the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem. Listen to me if you want God to listen to you. Once upon a time, the trees decided to choose a king. First they said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree refused, saying, Should I quit producing the olive oil that blesses both God and people just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the fig tree, You be our king. But the fig tree also refused, saying, Should I quit producing my sweet fruit just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the grapevine, You be our king. But the grapevine also refused, saying, Should I quit producing the wine that cheers both God and the people just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then all the trees finally turned to the thorn bush and said, Come, you be our king. And the thorn bush replied to the trees, if you truly want to make me your king, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, let fire come out from me and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Okay, that's like parable. He's, the people, the Israelites kept asking for a king. And you see what happened when they asked Gideon. He was like, no, I'm not the king. I'm the judge. Like, I'm staying in my lane. The Lord is the king. He the ruler over us. They were asking people. People kept saying no, because the Lord had made it plain. That's not what he wanted. They kept going until they found somebody to do it. And notice it was a thorn bush that was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll be your king or whatever. All right, keep going. Jotham, wait a minute. If you truly want me to be your king, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, let fire come out. Okay, verse 16. Jotham continued. Now make sure you have acted honorably. If you have gotten things and you have done it in a dishonorable way, this is for you. Okay. Now make sure you have acted honorably and in good faith by making Abimelech your king and that you have done right by Gideon and all of his descendants. Well, we know they didn't do right by Gideon and his descendants because they killed Gideon's sons, 70 of them, on one stone. Okay. Have you treated him with the honor he deserves for all he accomplished? For he fought for you and risked his life when he rescued you from the Midianites. But today you have revolted against my father and his descendants, killing his 70 sons on one stone. And you have chosen his slave woman's son, Abimelech, to be your king just because he is your relative. If you have acted honorably and in good faith toward Gideon and his descendants today, then may you find joy in Abimelech, and may he find joy in you. But if you have not acted in good faith, then may fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo. And may fire come out from the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. Then Jotham escaped and lived in Bear because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. This is political people. This was a this was a a coup. Uh, uh, he stole a government. He literally stole a government. He did shady stuff behind the scenes that everybody couldn't see. And he stole, he made a throne that didn't even exist and stole a, a people. It is political. Christians shouldn't do politics. Are you kidding me? This is what happened to us when we turn a blind eye. This. All this stuff is happening behind the scenes. And the people who live in this town, they're going to get it too. And they didn't have nothing to do with it because of their government. All right. Verse 22. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Quit acting like... Just because you don't feel like it or you don't like it or it makes you uncomfortable, that don't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel. Stuff is still going on. They're not like, well, we're not going to take over this government. 
because so and so don't feel whatever. No one cares. They doing what they want to do, and then you are stuck living out the consequences. Yes, it will be toppled, but we're getting tortured in the meantime. Yes, it will be toppled, but we're getting tortured in the meantime. And you know what? People gonna die when it gets toppled. And people who ain't have nothing to do with anything are gonna die. So it ain't just Leah. That sound good, but if, if people would do right in the first place, we don't have to keep having these these periods of judgment that tortures people. If Christians will wake up and stand up. Okay. All right. Judges chapter 9. We have verse 22 now. All right. After Abimelech had ruled over Israel for three years. So listen. He did all this. He killed his brothers. So first he went to his uncles. He said the stuff he needed to say to get them to go along with it. They was like, all right. Well, we're going to give you this money. You you go. I don't know if they told him to go do this stuff. But he did it. And it wasn't until after he killed his 70 brothers on that one stone. Which sounds to me like a human sacrifice. But I mean, you know, that's a whole other topic. Once he did that, then they went, they came together in a meeting, and they uh, appointed him king. Okay? They appointed him king. All right. So now, he went for three years happy, doing what he wanted to do, being the king. Three years, nothing. Seemed like nothing happened. Little brother Jotham, who knew, who saw it all, he ran and hid, but he's in hiding for all of this time. He like, I ain't going back there, That he's going to kill me. Which is true. The Lord probably told him, go hide. Lord didn't say, well, since he was wrong, I'm going to take him out of his spot right now. No, nope. he be letting stuff run his course, right? Until he ready. So in the meantime, he had to run and hide. We we think because the person is wrong, the Lord going to snap their fingers and write it right then. But he doesn't. Like, he don't always do that. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he don't. So this case, the dude went three years doing what he wanted to do. Okay, listen to what happened after three years, though. This is important. This is really important. After Abimelech had ruled over Israel for three years. Listen, y'all. For people who think anything bad only comes from the devil, listen to this. Verse 23. God sent a spirit that stirred up trouble between Abimelech and the leading citizens of Shechem. And they revolted. Did you hear that? God, capital G God, sent a spirit, lowercase s. Not the Holy Spirit. He sent a demon. God sent it. Everything bad that happens is not just from the devil. Sometimes it's from God if you've been bad. Because all of it is his. Even the demons. Everything is his. He made all of it. He can do what he wants with it. So y'all see that? That's not Mila talking. That is uh, Judges chapter 9 verse 23. God sent a spirit that stirred up trouble between Abimelech and the leading citizens of Shechem and they revolted. He sent a spirit to stir up trouble between both parties who were responsible for overtaking that government. And they started fighting each other. All right. Verse 24. God was punishing Abimelech for murdering Gideon's 70 sons and the citizens of Shechem for supporting him in this treachery of murdering his brothers. He let him hot ride out for three years doing nothing. It seemed like he got away with it. And then I was like, it's time. Sent some demons down to the leading citizens of Shechem. Sent demon to uh, Abimelech. They got the bucket. Because he was going to make them take each other out. But guess who else? Other folks got taken out while they was fighting. Let's keep reading. Verse 25, the citizens of Shechem sent an ambush for Abimelech on the hilltops and robbed everyone who passed that way. But someone warned Abimelech about their plot. One day, Gael, son of Ebed, moved to Shechem with his brothers and gained the confidence of the leading citizens of Shechem. During the annual harvest festival at Shechem, held in the temple of the local god, lowercase g, the wine flowed freely and everyone began cursing Abimelech. Who is Abimelech? Gail shouted. He's not a true son of Shechem. So why should we be his servants? He's merely the son of Gideon. And these, and this Zebul is merely his deputy. Serve the true sons of Hammer, the founder of Shechem. Why should we serve Abimelech? So he's so in discord. Okay, this random person comes from out of nowhere like, what are we doing this for? Like, why are we doing it? You know, it's always somebody. If I were in charge here, I would get rid of Abimelech. I would say to him, get some soldiers and come out and fight. But when Zabel, the leader of the city, heard what Gail was saying, he was furious. 
He sent messengers to Abimelech in Aruma telling him, Gael, son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to live in Shechem, and now they are inciting the city to rebel against you. Right? So Abimelech is still powerful. So he got people everywhere listening. So he, you know, he's sitting there, he's sitting on his throne. He may like, and they like, this dude that came in town with his brothers talking mess and trying to make everybody turn on you. He still has the upper hand at this point. Okay. Come by night with an army and hide out in the fields. In the morning, as soon as it is daylight, attack the city. When Gale and those who are with him come out against you, you can do with them as you wish. So Abimelech and all his men went by night and split into four groups, stationing themselves around Shechem. Gale was standing at the city gates when Abimelech and his army came out of hiding. When Gale saw them, he said to Zabel, look, there, there are people coming down from the hilltops. Zabel replied, it's just the shadows on the hills that look like men. So Zabel, the dude don't know Zabel and Ren and told Abimelech because he's, he's loyal to Abimelech. This dude is an outsider. So he playing along like he with the outsider to, to get him in a vulnerable position to get, to get hemmed up. Okay. But again, Gail said, no, people are coming down from the hills and another group is coming down the road past the diviners. Oh, then Zabel turned on him and asked, now where's that big mouth of yours? Wasn't it, wasn't it you that said who was Abimelech and why should we be his servants? The men you mocked are right outside the city. Go out and fight them. So Gael led the leading citizens of Shechem into battle against Abimelech. But Abimelech chased him and many of Shechem's men were wounded and fell along the road as they retreated to the city gate. Abimelech won. Abimelech is in, is in he's positioned in power and he's got, he's got all of these things around him to protect him. He's got people, he's got, so it seemed like he can't get them. Abimelech won. He divided his people into four groups. It's a countdown built into this scripture. That's why I'm showing y'all four, okay? Listen. Because it's a countdown until he get taken out. So we have four. <laughs> Abimelech returned to Aroma and Zabel drove Gale and his brothers out of Shechem. So they left. So he, he won. Okay. The next day the people of Shechem went out into the fields to battle. When Abimelech heard about it, he divided his men into three groups and set an ambush in the fields. It's a countdown. When, the, when Abimelech saw the people coming out of the city, he and his men jumped up from their hiding places and attacked them. Abimelech and his group stormed the city gate to keep the men of Shechem from getting back in. While Abimelech's other two groups cut them down in the fields, the battle went on all day before Abimelech finally captured the city. He killed the people. He killed the people. The people ain't had nothing to do with nothing. You hear that? This is politics. When your government is a mess and your government start fighting with other people, outsiders, guess who dies? Abimelech's still alive. The people are dead. This is why Christians, we need to be in politics. Why we all talk about, well, I hate when people be talking about politics. Just give me the word. You don't even read the word. Give yourself the word. Go read the word. We need to be talking about politics because that's why we live in this crap we're living through right now. So he said, he killed the people, leveled the city, and scattered salt all over the ground. He, wanted, he didn't want them to be able to make crops, child. So we had three, okay. Uh... No, no, no. We had two. He just, it says, while Abimelech's other two groups cut them down in the fields, the battle went on all day before Abimelech finally captured the city. He killed the people, leveled the city, and scattered salt all over the ground. So we done went four, three, two. Abimelech about to get it in a minute, y'all. Keep listening. Verse 46. When the leading citizens who lived in the Tower of Shechem heard what had happened, they ran and hid in the temple of Baal Barrett. So they ran and hid in the pagan temple. Okay. Someone reported to Abimelech that the citizens had gathered in the temple. So he led his forces. That's one. He, they stayed together this time. They didn't break up in groups. That's one. So we didn't win. Four, three, two, one. He led his forces to Mount Zalman. He took an axe and chopped some branches from a tree, then put them on his shoulder. Quick, do as I have done, he told his men. So each of them cut down some branches following Abimelech's example. They piled the branches against the walls of the temple and set them on fire. So all the people who had lived in the Tower of Shechem died, about a thousand men and women. He just killed some more people who ain't have nothing to do with nothing. These people just trying to run for their lives because all held and broke loose in their town. And Abimelech set, he, when they all piled up in this place to try to, to try to hide, he set them on fire and burned them all to death. But we ain't supposed to do, Christians, we ain't supposed to be in politics. 
Get out of here. It's the craziest crap ever. The whole Bible is politics. Okay, so now he done killed another batch of people. All right. Then Abimelech attacked the town of Thebes and captured it. But there was a... Listen, we're at zero now. Okay, okay. Then Abimelech attacked the town of Thebes and captured it. Seemed like he went and he just capturing stuff left and right, killing people, capturing. He just rolling, okay? But there was a strong tower inside the town. And all the men and women, the entire population, fled to it. They barricaded themselves and climbed up to the roof of the tower. They're scared and running from Abimelech. They all climbed in the strong tower. Abimelech followed them to attack the tower. But as he prepared to set fire to the entrance, do what he always did, it worked before, so he think it's gonna work now. Listen to this. A woman on the roof dropped a millstone that landed on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Someone insignificant, seemingly insignificant, she didn't even have a name, they just called her a woman who was running and was just up there. She dropped a millstone off the roof and it crushed Abimelech's skull. He quickly said to his young armor bearer, draw your sword and kill me. Don't let it be said that a woman killed Abimelech. He's still worried about his pride. That's just like Jezebel. She was like, painting her eyelids and messing up her hair. Like, are you coming in peace, you murderer? She knew they were coming to get her. It was time. He knew it. He like, fine, just please kill me so they don't think a woman killed me, even though the woman is the reason he died. Don't, um, so the young man ran him through with his sword and he died. Listen to what happened when Abimelech died. Verse 55. When Abimelech's men saw that he was dead, you know them scoundrels that he paid to do what he said and follow him and fight with him? They disbanded and returned to their homes. No one, they didn't mourn. They didn't try to continue with the good fight. They didn't try to take his spot. They literally was like, he dead, let's go. What's up, Myla Rose? Okay, go, go get a pull up, Myla Rose. All right, mommy will come help you. I'll be there in one second. All right, y'all, I gotta wrap this up. Luckily, we're at the end. Okay, so listen. In this way, God punished Abimelech for the evil he had done against his father by murdering his 70 brothers. God also punished the men of Shechem for all their evil. So the curse of Jotham, son of Gideon, was fulfilled. Them people that he had running with him, as soon as he was gone, they went home. They was like, they was over it, but they were too, they couldn't turn back. They knew that if they didn't stay loyal to him while he was alive, they would get killed. But as soon as his butt was dead, normally in the Bible when somebody died, People wear sackcloth and they be mourning for 30 days and blah, 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 blah. These people, it was like, when Abimelech's men saw that he was dead, they disbanded and returned to their homes. Nobody really cared about him. They did stuff out of fear. And as soon as he was gone, they didn't even want to keep it going. Usually somebody want to take your spot. Nobody wanted his spot. They was like, I don't want that spot. I'm out. I'm going home. That's interesting. They were out in the streets before, but when this thing was all over, they wanted to go home. They was trying to find home. He found them out in the streets, troublemakers out in the streets. They, When this was over, when they went through this crap with Abimelech, they was like, I'm going home. Mama, where you at? Wifey, where you at? They came home. But the source had to be taken out. Stuff was going, it seemed like Abimelech was winning for a long time, even when he was falling. It seemed like he was, you know, people was giving him, but eventually, four, three, two, one millstone to the dome and it was over just like that in an instant he went from burning people down but all those people died all those people who had nothing to do with anything lost their lives because it was politics and that was the government they were under this is why we cannot sit here and be like i ain't involved in politics and then it was people who voted Abimelech in because they weren't paying attention to the right stuff. They were more loyal to their family name than to what's right by the Lord. Because the Lord, Jesus said, my family is my, when they, was, they had said to Jesus, 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 your mother and brother and sisters are out there. They want to talk to you. And he was like, my mother and brother and sisters are the people who are doing the will of my father. That's what Jesus said. 
We have these loyalties to things before God. You can have loyalties to things after God. So if those things that you're loyal to are violating what you are supposed to do in Christ, you can't do it. When we put these, these other things before God, that's how you end up with a government that's going to get you killed. Just because you don't like it. It don't matter what you like or how you feel, actually. I don't know no scriptures in here where it say the Lord took into account the feelings of any of these people in this Bible. Like, I can't show me one. And after Abimelech died, they got a judge over Israel again, not a king. It says, verse 10, after Abimelech died, Tola, son of Pua, son of Dodo, was the next person to re rescue Israel. He was from the tribe of Issachar, but lived in the town of Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Israel for 23 years. When he died, he was buried in Shamir. It went back to normal. When the source gets taken out, things are going to go back. I'm not like, I'm in the world, it's not going to ever be like it was before, I don't believe. But um, things will go back to some something that you know, when the Lord takes this stuff out. Went back to how it was supposed to be, how God intended it. God re put it, reset it back to where he was, where it was supposed to be at, where he said it was supposed to be. Reset it. That's why we see the rise and fall of the leadership and judges and kings. Yeah, it was, uh, it was this the whole time. And it was the same reason every time that people failed worship of pagan uh, gods. So all of these people who think it's okay that they think they're, they're God and um, you know, we made his image so I'm a God. You're not. You're not a God. You're, you're like, I mean, okay, a lowercase G-O-D, sure. And, but, but lowercase G-O-Ds in the Bible are demons. So if that's what you claim, and go for it. Okay, but whatever. Listen, he is sovereign. We are not him. We are not supposed to be trying to like take his place I'm not trying to take his place in my life and like me have it that's not how when you do that this what happened to Abimelech and Jezebel that's what's going to happen to you honey these pagan these pagan beliefs making these altars to you know to manifest the stuff you want that's what he did he manifested the desires of his wicked heart he put a sacrifice on the altar of his 70 brothers and he can made a covenant with these leading people of Shechem and the Lord let him do it for a bit. And when they say the Lord will give you the desires of your heart, he let him do it. Then look at how all of them went, went down. He made them start fighting each other. The devil is not loyal to anybody. And look, now, it was his family. Because he was family, they went and put him in the position, right? And so now, when everything is falling apart, him and his family killed each other. If he will kill his 70 brothers, do you not think he will kill you? So they, they did it because they was family. But he killed his brothers and they was family. That's not, because that's not something to be doing, making those kind of decisions based upon. It's not, it's not solid. Yes, Babylon will be tough. We have a consequence to pay for our nation's sin. Exactly. That's what I'm saying yesterday. Everybody praying for you, praying, and fine, go ahead. But we need to be praying for us because it's coming to us next, child. People think nothing will ever happen on American soil. I'm so sad to tell you that that's not true. And the only protection you're going to have is the shield of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have none, then you kind of screwed. Because people don't read no Bible. Y'all need to read this Bible. I'm trying to tell you. You'll realize that a lot of the stuff you said ain't right. And what they had told you was wrong. Even at church. And let me show you something. I done read this to people a million times. But I'm about to read it again. Because it's, it's 2 Chronicles 7.
This is after King Solomon built, it to, built, built the temple to God and he dedicated it to him. He sacrificed all these um, things to the Lord and the temple once he put it together. And so I'm starting at verse 11. Second Chronicles 7, I'm starting at verse 11. So Solomon finished the temple of the Lord as well as the royal palace. He completed everything he had planned to do in the construction of the temple and the palace. Then one night the Lord appeared to Solomon and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as the place for making sacrifices. Listen to verse 13, y'all. Listen, this is God speaking to Solomon. And the Lord says, at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls. Or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. The Lord said, at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls. I might send a drought sometimes to y'all. I might send grasshoppers to devour your crops. I might destroy your... That's a famine, okay? Um, I might send plagues around among you. Lord, why would you send a drought and kill the crops and um, give us plagues? Verse 14 that everybody love to quote. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Number one, humble themselves and pray. Number two is pray and seek my face. Number uh, That's number three. And turn from your wicked ways. You got to do all four of those things, okay? And then it says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. So basically, the reason that he sent a drought, a famine, and plagues was because you were wicked. Because he says, once you humble yourself, because we're haughty and narcissistic and really think if like our individual whatever matters and we got our own individual truth and we above this and that and somebody got to prove to them. Don't listen. Just because you ain't, ain't, ain't woke enough to know that the Lord is real doesn't change the fact that he is. And then you're going to have the consequences when, when, when judgment comes. You're going to have to live through the consequences and saying, well, I ain't know. Ain't nobody show me. He like, I gave you the book, instruction book. You chose not to read it. That's your choice. He, so the first thing you got to do is humble yourself or the rest of the stuff don't matter. If you praying and you don't have no humility, guess what? You're not going to hear him when he's trying to tell you to do something that's the opposite of what your wicked heart want to do. You're not going to hear him. That's why the first order of instruction was humble yourself. If that was me, I wouldn't have did that. Yes, you would have. You would have. Yes, you would have. You would have. You're not above it. Humble yourselves and pray. And then after you pray, it says, seek my face. He said, okay, so when you pray, then I need you to look for me for the answer. Not just keep praying. If you keep on praying and you're not listening to what he's telling you to do, you're just wasting your time. So that's why he says you got to seek my face. When you seek his face, he's going to tell you to stop sinning. And you got to do it. That's why he tell you to humble yourself first. Because if you're just praying with no humility, and then he trying to tell you, and you think you know everything, then you just keep praying the same wicked prayers for decades, and your life just keep getting worse and worse. And every, you keep getting close to stuff, and it keep getting snatched away, and all of this other business. That stuff just keep happening until you die. Because you only doing one part of the, of the four steps. You only doing the pray part. You're not doing the humble yourself part. You're not doing the seek your face part. And you're not doing the turn from your wicked ways part. You ain't doing none of that other stuff. It don't work like that. He didn't say do one of the three, pick two of the three. I mean, do one of the four, pick two of the four. Make sure you do at least three of the four. No, he said do four of the four. And then he said he'll forgive your sins and restore your land. It goes on to say, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. So once you get into this position, into a posture to do this part, the humble, pray, seek his face, turn from with the ways. Now he said his ears will be open and his eyes attentive to every prayer made in this place. So when you do that, he's going to pay attention to your prayers. So basically what he's telling you is I wasn't paying attention to him before. He don't be paying attention to wicked people's prayers. I don't know what, I don't care what they told you. This Bible says something different. If you acting a fool out there in these streets, he ain't listening. And you can tell that he ain't because your life ain't changing. You don't have to take my word for it. Look at your life. Has your mind changed? Do you think the same way you thought a year ago? And by that I mean, if you say, no, I think different because you're more paranoid and anxious, that's not it. That's not what I mean. <laughs> are you better? Are you thinking different for the better? 
Do you have more peace? Love, joy, self-control? Verse 16, for I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it for it is dear to my heart. Y'all got to read your Bible. You have to read the Bible. You can't wait for somebody to feed it to you. I know I never heard about Abimelech's story in a church. I ain't saying no churches ain't never talked about it, but they teach about the same stuff over and over again with the same kind of message attached to it all. Feel good and the Lord is going to rescue you, but he's not rescuing the wicked people. He's about to have judgment on them and you don't even realize that you're one of the wicked. I was one of the wicked. I didn't know it because it seemed like I was good on the surface. He doesn't look at the surface. He looks at your heart. We're all wicked at baseline. Jeremiah 17, 9. I'm going to show you that's not me talking. It's the Lord. So they're like, Dr. Miley said, listen, Dr. Miley ain't said nothing. The Lord said it. I'm just repeating what he said to y'all because don't nobody read their Bible, child. Where Jeremiah? There we go. Jeremiah 17, 9. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. So Abimelech's due rewards was a millstone to the dome by a woman. The Lord, you know how disgraceful it was for a man to be killed by a woman? In those days, he let a woman take him out with just a little pebble. That was what that was the reward he deserved for the for what he had done. Even though no one else knew all the things he did behind the scenes, the Lord knew. You might have kept the secret from all the people you did wrong to, but the Lord was watching. And then one random day, he was just like, "It's time." Send some spirits, lowercase s spirits. Some of these these demons that I that that I created all of this stuff. I'm gonna send them down there. They do. Everybody do what the Lord say. Everybody do what the Lord say. In the spirit realm, they listen to the Lord. They might be running around doing what Satan say, and then when the Lord say, "You go there," they go. <laughs> they go. He trumps all of it. That's what people don't realize. He trumps it all. That's why if you're not on his side. So when you disobey an instruction he gives you, guess what that makes you? His enemy. So anything that, I mean, you can end up getting whatever if you are in disobedience. It's all through this Bible, those kind of stories too. I can't get into one of them now. This video kind of long. But uh, let me see. Was it First Kings? It's one where a prophet of the Lord... He was obedient for most of the way and then he fell off at the end and he ended up getting ate up by a lion on the side of the road. It's like, but he was doing the Lord's work. He was and he disobeyed an instruction, a critical instruction that didn't seem critical, but we realized it was once the lion ate him. You can't partially follow his rules. You have to all the way do it. When he has you on assignment to do something and you just, you can't, that's the problem with us. We always want to do two out of four or three out of four. He like, if I tell you to do something, I need you to do all the things. I say it. Gotta do all of it. Yes, Black Cherry 57. She said, once we read his word, there has to be application of his word. Exactly. Don't nobody apply it. I remember I was sitting in church um, years ago before, right before, this was probably about six months before I like, uh, you know, but got, got obsessed with the Lord and, and started just, you know, doing right. And I remember sitting there like, the choir, the choir, the leader of the praise and worship team was wicked. She did some lowdown stuff to my little boy in the Christmas pageant and all that stuff. And that was one of the reasons why I kind of stopped going. Um, she was not a nice lady. But she would be up on that stage, hopping around, smiling, beautiful voice. like. And I, and I was looking at her after she did this foul thing to my son. And I was like... How can she be up there so joyful and like just looking like just a great representative for the Lord? But behind the scenes, she's she's her heart is bitter and tore up. 
Like it bothered me and I was like, people use church for entertainment. Because you would never know. Like on the surface, she seemed like such a nice lady, but she wasn't a nice lady. She was a bitter, she was bitter and mean. And and Bennett was like six or seven. He was little. And she broke his heart. She broke his heart. My baby walked up to that Christmas, um, up to that stage for the Christmas thing, crying as he was walking out to the stage because of that wicked woman. And I remember thinking, people just come here for entertainment. They don't actually live out. She's not living out them songs she's singing. She clearly ain't reading this Bible. And I was just like, I don't want to use church for entertainment. I'm trying to, I actually was trying to change. I just didn't know how to do it. And I wasn't learning in that church. When they when they ripped my little boys our heart out, I was done after that. And that's not a good reason, actually. <laughs> now I understand it's bigger than that, right? Um, that's not a good reason. But that was the, that was how I was moving back then because I didn't know any better. Um I've learned. That's not you don't leave until the Lord tells you to leave, which he did. He did end up telling me to leave, but I was already kind of going and not going. When I used to be there all the time, I had kind of fell off on my own for my, for reasons that was not God telling me not to go. But when I finally stopped and I had peace with it, it was because the Lord was like, don't go to church right now. So, but I started off just mad about what had happened to my kid because I was a narcissist like everybody else <laughs> and thought everything. But she was tripping. She still was wrong. We can be deceived thinking we are right. That's why we need a balance in teaching, not just what we're going to get blessed with. Exactly. Plus, plus, like, I mean, exactly. That's You're exactly right. Anyway, let me um, go ahead and take 10 of my kids because Myla Rose is at the door. And she already told me she needed her help, my help. So, um, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this word, Lord. And I, thank, I, I pray that it hits each person. In a new way so that their life is different after after hearing it lord i ask that you just speak to each individual person and guide them back to you lord guide them to you guide them to your word this instruction manual that you've made for us lord and i just um ask you to cover us as we enter into this new season um which all of it won't be good it won't seem good from the surface but we're, if we are rooted in you then we'll be fine and we'll come out victorious so after today, Lord, I ask that each person who hears this video finds their way to the right side of the battle line, to the side that you are on, Lord. They walk in obedience. We're not, we're not just going to pray, but we're also going to obey, obey the instructions that you set out before us. Lord, you've definitely sent droughts and famines and plagues among us, Lord. And so right now, I am calling for each person under the sound of my voice to humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways so that you can hear from heavens, forgive our sins, and restore our land, Lord. And so I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for this word. And I ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, y'all. I'm about to go take care of my kids. My prayer has seemingly been answered because it don't look like it's in the rain right now. Child. All right, I'll check y'all later. Bye.